Welcome to Lockheed Martin Space Makers, the podcast that takes you out of this world and an inside look at some of our most challenging and innovative missions. This week we are covering NASA's Artemis One mission, which is launching the design and built Lockheed Martin spaceship to the moon. Today we have special guests to talk about the Astrorad vest, which is designed to protect astronauts from deep space radiation. Thank you for joining us today and uh, do you mind introducing yourselves? Yeah, I'm uh, Jordan Hurry. I'm the lead scientist for space exploration at STEMRAD. Awesome. Hello, my name is Shirit Schwartz, and I'm the Astrorad uh, product director. So, what exactly is this Astrorad vest? So, as you said, the Astrorad vest is a personal wearable uh, protecting vest that protects astronauts from uh, space radiation, and it was mainly designed to protect from uh, charged particles, solar particles, uh, that are being um, spread during uh, solar storms. That's great. So uh, can you share a little bit more about how this vest was developed and then like, how does it work? How does it stop those solar particles? So um, following uh, NASA's plan to send astronauts further deep into the space and for longer a uh, period of time, uh, the, the radiation issue uh, was uh, needed to be addressed. So they reached out to uh, Lockheed Martin for a solution and they uh, contacted STEMRAD since STEMRAD is specializing in developing uh, personal protective wearable uh, solutions uh, that protects against uh, radiation. Uh, we have um, the 360 gamma uh, belt which protects uh, first responders from gamma radiation. And we actually adapted the principle using in, used in that uh, a solution into the vest. And the principle we are using uh, is a, a selective shielding uh, principle, meaning that we add uh, more mass over the more sensitive organs. And uh, here you can see um, the shielding core. Uh, this is, is the shoulder panel, and it's made of thousands of hexagons put together, assembled together, and providing us a solid a structure that prevents the radiation, harmful radiation, to uh, penetrate the body. But because it's divided into so many segments, it is a flexible uh, yeah. structure for the comfort of the user. Yeah, they can move around. They can it. move around it, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And, and the material yeah. that is being used here is the polyethylene, and we're using a high density polyethylene since it is rich in hydrogen. And hydrogen is the best element uh, to absorb the energy from uh, charged uh, particles. Wow. So, you know, Artemis 2 will be sending NASA astronauts to the moon, and um, they're going to be encountering deep space radiation that's different than what astronauts experience in low Earth orbit at the International Space Station. So can you talk about the difference between radiation you experience in deep space versus what you experience in low Earth orbit? Yeah, so the major difference between the radiation that astronauts will see in deep space and low Earth orbit is basically just the, the energy and the intensity of the radiation. Okay. On, in low Earth orbit, uh, they are still within the protection of the Earth's magnetic field and uh, that magnetic field ma mainly stops uh, all the low energy radiation that is coming in and that that's what makes up most of the radiation also the low energy radiation is the is the most harmful radiation because it very easily deposit uh, harmful energy within the human body so uh, once you leave the protective bubble of earth's magnetic field uh, that type of radiation is much more prevalent and that's why we want to have a solution like the Astrorad vest uh, when NASA sends their astronauts to deep space. So on Artemis 1, Orion is launching. Uh, the Astrorad vest is being flown on Orion performing an experiment. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, so uh, this experiment is called the MARA experiment. That stands for Matryoshka Astrorad Radiation Experiment. Uh, so the Matryoshkas are the, um, are the phantoms and uh, phantoms are, are basically human body models or, or mannequins. Um, and these have uh, thousands of radiation detectors throughout the body. And in addition, these phantoms are uh, human tissue equivalent. So the, the material that they're made of um, basically mimics the density of bone, uh, the lungs, uh, the breasts, and other tissues 
uh, just so that the radiation, when it passes through uh, the phantoms, will interact with, with the object in the same way that it interacts with the human body. So basically, the phantoms will allow us to determine exactly what the type of, um, what the dose in a human body will look like when astronauts travel to deep space. So during this experiment, there will be two of them, uh, one named Helga and one named Zohar. Uh, and Helga will not be wearing the astroad vest and Zohar will be wearing the vest. So when, uh, when they come back to Earth after, after the Artemis I mission, uh, we'll be able to compare the results from all those thousands of radiation detectors and find out uh, exactly how effective the Astrorad vest is and uh, we can determine which, what improvements need to be made and uh, optimize the, the protection for, for our astronauts. Excellent. And this vest was developed with a lot of international cooperation. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah. So first of all, we are very grateful for this collaboration with Lockheed Martin uh, DLR and the Israeli Space Agency, and each of one uh, contributed to this uh, experiment, this Mar experiment. Uh, Lockheed uh, Martin um, were uh, handling all the logistic aspect of sending the Asherad out into space. Um, they provided, the, they developed the standard for the vest. Uh, for example, um, making sure that all the material that is used in the vest uh, complies with the uh, NASA's regulation for uh, outgassing and, um, and flammability. And uh, of course, uh, they uh, provided their expertise in a deep space uh, in a radiation environment. Um, STEMRAD led the design of the, of the vest using the selective shielding principle we were mentioning before. And the uh, Israeli Space Agency provided the vest for this uh, MAR experiment. Uh, the DLR team, they uh, provided the two phantoms and they will uh, let the uh, data collecting from the detectors once they come back, the phantoms come back uh, to us. Well, I know Lockheed Martin and NASA is appreciative of your work of developing this vest and we look forward to you know, looking at the results that come back from Artemis 1 and when this vest goes to protect our astronauts on the Artemis 2 mission. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today on Space Makers. Mm -hmm. And we're back with Space Makers. I'm with Stu McClung, who's a NASA Orion engineer. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, we are two days away from the launch. We're all very excited as we prepare to see uh, Artemis 1 launch the Lockheed Martin design and built Orion spaceship to the moon. Can you share a little bit about the uh, Artemis 1 mission objectives? Glad to, yeah, I'm, um, I share your excitement. I've been working on Orion with your team for a number of years, right? I think every one of us is, uh, we're ready to go. We've, leading up to today, right? We've assembled, we've tested uh, here at the Cape, labs across the country, you know, everybody's done their due diligence. Uh, so we'll f we're about to prove to ourselves that our work is as, as rigorous and good as we think it is. That's kind of the way I like to think about it, right? See an exciting launch come up, uh, fairing separation, uh, one of, is one of my personal uh, interests, you know, fairing separation. We'll get a good system checkout. ICPS uh, will give us a good TLI burn, and then off to the moon we go. So. That's awesome. Now, Artemis One, it's taken quite a bit to get here, and uh, can you share some of the the milestones uh, that it's taken for us to to get, uh, you know, Artemis One on the launching pad? Well, certainly. I mean, yeah, between uh, the work we've done um, in like in the ITL at Denver, uh, or down the down the road here in the ONC with uh, assembly, we've done vehicle power on testing and uh, you know proof testing of all the propulsion and the ECLA systems. Right, we have done at every system level. We've checked the this vehicle out, uh, and uh, I like to think of it as building blocks. We've brought all those building blocks together, and uh, it's she's sitting out there on the launch pad right now, ready yeah, to awesome. go. Right, and so that's that's got us to this point in time and now we've got milestones coming ahead of us as we execute the mission yeah speaking of that you know obviously the launch is one of the most uh visually exciting moments but uh ryan has a 40-day mission ahead of itself 
can you share some of uh, some of the things that NASA is excited about? Maybe some of the things that you're personally excited about about the Artemis One mission? Oh, certainly. Yeah. So we've got north of 100 test objectives um, on this flight, and so there'll be multiple events and multiple tests along the way. Like I said, uh, the ICPS will send us on the way, get to the moon, and do a nice, a nice low, close uh, flyby of the of the lunar surface. Uh, like I said, every system gets tested. Uh, We've got 11, I think it's 11, maybe it's 13. We've got a bunch of cameras on our vehicle. There's four, one on the end of each of the solar arrays. And so, uh, you know, and we have that for our vehicle data needs. I also think we'll probably get a really good selfie from the yeah. from the vehicle looking back. You know, I think Orion's going to give the world a really good selfie yeah, when we awesome. do a low flyby. You have the, the major burn events. Uh, when, then we go into the distant retrograde orbit. And when we come back out of the retrograde orbit, uh, return home, uh, Personally, I'm looking forward to uh, uh, entry day. I'll be in the mission evaluation room with the team uh, when we're doing re-entry. Uh, the heat shield, testing the heat shield is one of our key test objectives to demonstrate its, its readiness for putting crew on on Artemis II. And then, um, and then all the landing systems and parachutes that uh, earlier in my time in Orion I got to personally work on. So uh, I'm really looking forward to watching those systems uh, operate and, and we'll see how they perform. And speaking of the heat shield, uh, you know, when the objects are entering the Earth's atmosphere from low Earth orbit, they're coming at a much lower velocity mm -hmm. than maybe what you're coming from the moon. I don't know if you want to speak to that just a little bit of the, just the, the amount of velocity that yeah, you're encountering. Just a little bit, yeah. When you come back from the, when you come back to deep space, you're roughly 25,000 miles per hour. So you're, you're moving. <laughs> That's fast. Yeah. It's fast, right? Uh, and I, and so you, you start the re-entry process and, and I always like to use the term surfing, which is not the right technical term, but it's how I visualize it. You decelerate by trading that speed for heat. And you come down through the atmosphere and the vehicle is, is hitting the denser atmosphere. The heat shield is seeing extreme temperatures and you're and the vehicle is decelerating in that process. And uh, the heat shield will see temperatures, parts of it in the range up to say 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit, wow. right? Lava flows at 2,100, so you are, seriously hot and so we've tested this in the lab uh, on small test articles but one of the key objectives for the mission is 16 foot diameter heat shield and how does that heat energy across the acreage of that heat shield how does it behave do we have it modeled correctly right uh, right and so that we know that again on artemis 2 we're going to have astronauts in there we're going to have crew and that's our job is to send them out and bring them back home and this is a key objective to make sure that when we fly them, that we're going to do it uh, with do it properly. And that segues nicely into my next question. Of you mentioned Artemis II, astronauts are going to be uh, uh, flying on Orion to the moon. Can you talk about what's next after this launch of Artemis One? So after Artemis One, we we'll bring the vehicle back. We're actually sharing some pieces of avionics out of Artemis One to the uh, Artemis II Orion. Okay. We'll also be gathering, looking at all of our flight data, and if there's, you know, if we learn something from this flight test that says ah, we need to make a make an adjustment, right. we'd have that discussion and work that in. Right. Uh, otherwise, right, Artemis II is already being assembled and tested uh, over in the uh, down the road in the IOC, IOZ, so that's going well. We'll bring crew on, bring on the rest of the uh, crew-related support equipment, put that in the vehicle. We'll do a, a de rendezvous demonstration on Artemis II mm -hmm. and uh, set ourselves up for Artemis III uh, when Orion will go and uh, rendezvous and dock with the lander system. Um, and then we'll start taking crew down to the surface. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Stu, on behalf of myself and everyone at Lockheed Martin Space Makers, we thank you for taking the time today with us and for all that you're doing on Orion. Well, thank you. Thanks for your all support. Thank you for joining Lockheed Martin Space Makers today. Follow along as we continue the coverage of NASA's Artemis One mission. You can watch these interviews on YouTube or wherever podcasts are found at Lockheed Martin Spacemakers.